Hi everyone. Good afternoon. Let me just pop in here. I'm on my iPad. Make sure that I am visible and then we can get started. There I am. Hi. How are you guys? Good to see you. Who's on live with me? I always want to know who's here. Hello. Welcome to Lead with Intent, where conscientious leaders gather on a weekly basis to talk about leadership. So you are in the right spot. Hi, Gabriela. Good to see you. I'm so happy you're here. Anne is here. So happy you two are here. Yay. Thank you so much. Uh, so before we get started on our session today, will you please share with me, here are my graphics, you like them? Will you please share with me some of your wins? Uh, you know, we're, we want to start the show off with um, celebrating each other. So if you have a win, will you put the hashtag win or wins as in plural and let us know what those wins are. We want to celebrate you because that's what leaders do. We celebrate each other. So share your wins with us. So first of all, happy Women's History Month. And also tomorrow is uh, International Women's Day. And so uh, if you're watching all the female leaders out there, um, let's celebrate each other. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going, going to you know, talk about um, some of those challenges and, and some of the, um, the contrast that we female leaders face and the strategies to overcome them. And so before I, uh, and let me, let me move my little graphic out of there. So here are some things that I want to share with you before we get started, because, I, and by the way, I need to put my timer on because you guys know me. I am a hot mess here. So let's put it on for 20 minutes because I respect your time and I want to make sure we are done by uh, way before 20. Because if you noticed last week, I ran uh, about 30 minutes. So let's not do that again. Um, so before we get started on our conversation today about um, women in leadership and the struggles that they face, um, here are some a few things that I want to um kind of uh, um, share with you. I want for you to all to stay open-minded uh, during this conversation. And, um, and the reason why is because I do have a lot of amazing uh, misters, a lot of le male leaders out there that follow this feed, follow my page, and are on my email list. And I say this because you know, leadership affects all of us, whether you're a man or a woman, right? This is something that we need to talk about. These are things that we need to bring to light. Um, and as I was putting this list together, I was thinking, well, a lot of my male clients also, you know, are faced with some of these challenge challenges. And I thought, well, this could benefit them as well. So if you are a mister supporting our sisters in leadership out there, this conversation is also for, for you. Um, so stay open-minded to what we're about to share today. Um, and so um, if you uh, lead women or uh, are led by a woman, then this conversation today should also serve you. So for all my men out there, thank you for joining us. So um, stay open-minded to the conversation. Uh, don't be deterred by the topic that we're going to share today. Also, number two, this is not an exhaustive list. We have, you know, I put five challenges together so that we can um, open the conversation and the dialogue. These are challenges that um, that I have been uh, challenged personally, as well as my uh, female leaders, uh, my clients that are in, in leadership, and some of the peers that I interviewed uh, for an upcoming leadership book and a course uh, that I'm designing. And these are the challenges that were also shared during those interviews. So it's not an exhaustive list. There's so many more challenges that we can certainly talk about, but these are the five that I selected for us um, to, to discuss today. And then number three, I want for you all, um, you know, again, goes, goes in hand with being open-minded. If these challenges do not resonate with you, good, that's okay. Um, so treat this as 
a, a, a lecture. Treat this as uh, a university classroom. You know, you're taking down notes. Um, you may not, you know, have been challenged with these uh, individual things now, but you know, perhaps, um, perhaps down the road, you you will be challenged with with these things. And I hope you're not. But again, stay open minded and and. Uh, and take down some notes. Um, again, treat this like you're in a classroom. So let me go ahead and remove these little graphics here. So, okay, let's quickly um, look at some of these comments from, from our leaders. Uh, Gabriela says, here's a win, using new moon energy for new beginnings coming up. All right, sister, I like that, Gabriela. Gabriela is our energy healer, spiritual healer, and uh, does amazing work with energy. So um, yeah, that is a big win. Uh, let's see. Oh, she says, no, hombre, no timer. I am I know I need to get rid of the timer, but you guys are busy and I want to respect your time, right? So uh, 20 minutes and then, you know, you get me off the stage here. Anne says, here's a win for her. Uh, yes, plural. She has multiple wins. Uh, she aced a midterm that she thought she had bombed. Uh, got 100% on a paper that she didn't think uh, would be good and got an A in an eight-week course that was really tough. So Right on, Anne and Gabriela. Thank you so much for sharing your wins. And if you're watching the replay, will you all please um, share your wins using that hashtag so that we can celebrate you? Um, and that's what leaders do. We celebrate one another. So let's get started on our first challenge. Uh, so again, we're talking about five uh, uh, challenges that, that women in leadership face and the strategies so that we can overcome them. So these are the strategies to overcome uh, these, these uh, challenges. So we're gonna start with our first challenge. All right, so this is a, a, an interesting one, right? We, it's the salary discussions. So a lot of uh, the women that I interviewed and some of my clients talked about um, salary negotiations and how to even begin to discuss that with your leader. Or with your direct supervisor and uh, you know whether you're negotiating a salary or whether you are asking for a pay increase um, you know these are this is a challenge that we all face and a lot of this comes down to being able to sell ourselves right to be able to sell our skills our uh, you know knowledge our our abilities um, and and it's hard to find the confidence sometimes to persuade your um, your director or your leader or whoever you report to, it takes a lot of courage to walk into an office and ask for uh, a pay increase or a, you know, a salary negotiation. And these are usually done during um, a personal appraisal time or personal evaluation time, or performance evaluation time, I should say. And so that, that's usually when these discussions come up. And so this is one of the challenges that I have faced personally, but also as a leader. And so I want to share with you uh, a, a, a situation that I had with an employee. And uh, uh, she came into my office and asked for a $2 pay increase. And this, is, this was her approach. And I want to explain the approach and then I want to explain the strategy. You know, something that she should have done instead of her initial approach. So she came in and said, you know, I'm, 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 I want a $2 increase because Jim who is her peer, uh, his name is James, but we, we called him Jim or Jimmy. And Jim was making $2 uh, an hour more than her. And uh, in her, you know, her eyes, he was working a whole lot less than her. And so she came into my office and, you know, asked for the pay increase. And so, you know, at first I was taken aback by that because, you know, I, she, she came very fixated on Jim and what Jim wasn't doing and her comparing herself, comparing, you know, her abilities and her knowledge to another person. And so I, I, you know, I wanted to probe and ask her some questions because I wanted for her to come to this insight. So she came in asking for this. And, and of course I was, you know, so happy that she had enough confidence and courage to walk into my office and ask for this increase. But I wanted for her to take a different approach the next time she was going to come in and ask for an increase. So I asked her, will you share with me some of Jim's past experiences before coming into this organization? And while we're at it, can you share with me 
your past experiences. Of course, I know that I knew them both very well. I knew their backgrounds, their education level. I knew what each one brought to the organization. So she says, well, yeah, he was with a competitor. He was there for maybe six, seven years. And okay, well, this is my first job in this industry. And, and you know, my first job with these responsibilities. And I said, okay, okay, well, thank you. Uh, at least she knew, uh, you know, some information about Jim's past. So then I asked her about Jim's performance reviews. I said, so tell me about his performance appraisals. Will you share with me? Uh, you know, some of that information, are you even privy to that? Has he shared that with you? And also, let's talk about your past performance appraisals. And so she said, well, of course, I don't, I don't know, you know, how he scored. I don't know anything about that, but I, I've had to work on a few things, and these are the things I'm working on today. I said, great, great. I said, so now tell me about Jim's education level and share with me yours. Because here we were comparing. I wanted for her to see that she was in this comparison bubble with this one individual. This individual had more experience, prior experience than her, had also been with our organization longer than her. And I, of course, knew intimately those performance reviews because I wrote them up. So I wanted for her to find some insight in this moment where here she was coming to me basing her reason for the the uh the increase on Jim. And so I then asked her to just take a moment to 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 really look at why I was asking her about Jim and his qualifications. Um because I wanted I mean she was coming in with this comparison, well then let's really get down to the comparisons then. And so she, the light bulb went on and said, "Okay, well I I I understand what you're doing." And I'm actually really embarrassed that I'm I'm talking about Jim and I'm fixated on Jim and what he's doing and not doing and how much more he's getting paid that I am not. And I said, so first of all, thank you for having the confidence. Thank you for coming into my office. I'm so happy you've got the courage because you're going to need this. But here's here's the strategy I want for you to 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 take on the next time you walk into my office or someone else's office and ask for a pay increase. I want for you to do some market research. Do some competitive salary analysis. Come in here, not with this bubble of comparison to Jim, but come to me with this perspective of the industry. Tell me what your counterpart is making in either another competitor's organization or an organization similar to size and structure and scope like ours. Like, come to me with some of this context. Don't come to me and tell me what this one individual is doing or not doing and why you feel you deserve that $2 pay increase. So I, I wanted for her to give me a global perspective. Tell me, are you grossly being underpaid in this current role? And tell me why. Show me some of that research. Come in and tell me why you are really, truly deserving. So that's strategy number one. If you want to come into a leader's office and talk about salary negotiations or a pay increase, then tell me about what is out there because I may not know and your leader may not have time to go do this comparative analysis for you. You know, there's so much we have to do as leaders. So come to me and show me initiative that you've taken on, you know, this, this, the, the time and energy to bring this information into my office. Number two, I want for you to tell me about your performance evaluation. Tell me about what you bring to this organization. I want to know how you are contributing to the overall mission of this institution and more importantly, this department. How are you making this better? How are you making us better? How is your presence with your knowledge, your skills, your experience, making us better. Tell, remind me of that, please. So come to me with that information. Tell me about the education that you have to continue earning to stay viable in this position in my organization. Tell me all of the energy and effort that you have to do to stay viable here. 
because I want to take it all into consideration before I can make that decision. Or, or I can at least take it to someone who can ultimately make that decision. So that's the strategy. You want to talk about negotiations, salary negotiations? I'm all for it. Let me tell you, I have been on, at her end. I have been in that seat asking for more money because I was grossly underpaid and I, sh I had competitive salary analysis that I did. So by the way, you can find this information on indeed.com. Uh, you can find it on salary.com. That's another really, really great um, uh, online resource that you can do comparative analysis. You know, some industries are, are more open to it than others. Um, some that are in the innovative creative space possibly are, are, are more open to discussing salary negotiations. Um, you, you know, you may have these, um, nonprofit, uh, um, companies that aren't able to because they're strapped for finances. So take that into consideration too. Um, so again, do your homework, come with some research. Don't tell me what Jim is doing at, or not doing. Uh, I don't want to hear that. Um, I want to, I want to know what's out there in the industry and why you feel that you, you should be making more. I mean, these are, these are, these, this is evidence. This is ammo, ammunition or whatever, whatever you want to call it. This is information that a leader is going to need to then make these decisions or at least take it to someone who can ultimately make those final decisions. So do your homework and then take an introspective look and tell me what you are doing to make this department and overall institution better. That's what I want to know. What are you having to do to stay viable? Are you having to go and do more professional development, continued education, or even go and, and continue with, you know, graduate studies? Tell me what you need to do to stay current in this position. And we take it all into consideration. But first of all, we got to work on the mindset, right? We got to work on the courage. And so that's something that I did tell her she did very, very well. But the next time she was going to walk into someone's office, let's have some of that research to back up why she should get that pay increase. So I hope that strategy helps some of you, but this is a, this is a strong one, the salary discussion. Um, that's something that, that, you know, we're all plagued with, including our male counterparts out there. So it's, this is not just a female challenge, but, but it's something that um, we, we definitely needed to discuss today. Okay, so uh, challenge number two. So how many of us suffer from the imposter syndrome? I mean, I still deal with this all the time. So every time you reach a new level of success or achievement, there is a new set of limiting mindset beliefs, right? There's, a, there's always a new set of challenges that we face because we keep moving the needle and we keep increasing and, and, and uh, you know, striving for these higher standards that we have for ourselves. And the imposter syndrome is something that we as female leaders need to really take a look at and and it's really standing in your success and so here are some strategies to overcome the imposter syndrome you know one is taking the opportunity to reflect on your success i mean that's something that we must do and because no one else is going to to do it so it, it's just really reflecting on the hardships right reflecting on the contrast that you had to um go through to get to this new level of success you know, and, and, and we high performers know that. We know that what got us to this level will not get us to the next level. And when we get to that next level, what got us there is not going to get us to the next one. So we're constantly um, looking at ways to improve our skills and, and, and again, to stay viable and current and constantly evolving on this process. And so the self-limiting beliefs come at every stage of success. So number one, take that opportunity to reflect on your success. Number two, that was number one. Number, number two, let's look at why these beliefs are coming up. Again, leadership is not sexy. I've, I've said this time and time again. <laughs> leadership is about reflection. It's about introspection. It's doing the dirty work. And here we go. Why are these beliefs coming up for me? Was it something that was learned in, in childhood? Was it something that was developed during this last process. Like for example, for me, during the dissertation process of defending my research, wow, that was probably the most um, 
difficult time I've ever had in my career. And, and so much self-limiting stuff came up for me because I was being questioned at every turn. I was being um, challenged at every turn. And, and so much self-doubt was popping up and a lot of stuff that came up that I thought I had worked on because of some childhood stuff, right? And so here you are at a new level of success and you're about to defend your research and no one's liking it and, no, and everyone's challenging it. And then you start questioning your abilities and start questioning whether you're actually worthy of this new level of success. So we, we, we got to get the mindset in check. And so that's something that personally happened to me. And let me tell you, there was some level of PTSD after that. <laughs> talk to anyone with a terminal degree. And that is something that we talk about often is, is, is a little bit of that post-traumatic stress and, and a little bit of hiding in, into yourself for a good while until you can come out into uh, the light again. Um, so if that resonates with you, you know, at whatever level you're at, the imposter syndrome will, will stop you dead in your tracks if you let it. So that was number two. Again, we're talking about the strategies now. Why are these beliefs coming up for me? Was there something in childhood or something recent that has stirred up the dust? Number three, when a negative thought emerges, I want for you to refocus your attention on all the hard work that you put into achieving that new level of success, to, to getting to the point of, of this new level. And so it's really about appreciation. It's about turning your focus from being you know, negative and, and fearful into uh, an attitude of appreciation for all of the work that you just did and all the people who supported you along that way. Let's not forget, <laughs> it does sometimes take a village. And, and the last thing here is be kind to yourself um, because this can really stop, uh, you know, progressing you forward. It, it'll, the fear will stop uh, moving you forward. And so you deserve greatness and you deserve all the you know, most magnificent things that life has to offer. So don't let the imposter syndrome uh, keep you from achieving those, those uh, new levels of success. So we've talked about two challenges so far. So if you're joining, hello. If you're watching the replay, hello. Um, our first challenge um, was the uh, salary discussion. So we're talking about salary negotiations or we're talking about um, pay increase. Uh, we, 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 we talked about strategies um, to overcome that. We just finished talking about the imposter syndrome and some of those strategies to overcome that. Our third is support systems. And I know I'm, I'm already past the 20 minute mark, so I'll get through these next two, uh, next three very quickly. Support systems. So uh, something that I had to do was find a support systems outside of my family. And let me explain. My husband is an enabler. Um, I don't think I've ever heard him say the word no to me. And so in going into business, this new level of success for me, I had to find a tribe or find a community of other entrepreneurs who were also going through these same challenges, who not only shared values, but, but also um, had the same pain points, had the same challenges as, as new business owners. And so I had to, and I told my husband, I love you, but you, you, you don't stop me or you don't help me. <laughs> you're, you're very much an enabler. So why don't, why don't I go and look for some associations, some groups? And I did. I found the, the um, Society of Women Entrepreneurs here in Austin. And they're a group of, of women in, in all uh, industries, either in products or in services, um, uh, who are starting their businesses and who are, are going through the same mindset and, and self-limiting challenges that new business owners go through. So find your support systems. And that's something that a lot of female leaders are challenged with finding people who share the same values. Um, and I'm not saying like-minded, there is a difference. I want diversity. I want uh, you know differences in perspective, differences in upbringing. I am so open to, to sharing these experiences with other women who are unlike me, but we do share the same values, that we want to create financial freedom in our lives, that we want to have products and services that help and transform our clients, and so those are the shared values, but we're all very different and we come from you know, different walks of life. And so if you are challenged um, with finding a support system, look for associations, communities, um, 
nonprofit uh, organizations as well um, and and find that tribe that that uh, only you know only they know those personal pain points that you're going through so that is challenge number three and the strategies um, overcoming perfectionism in, is our next challenge so I'm sorry that I'm gonna rush through these everyone but again I respect your time and, and we are clearly over the 20 minute mark um, but overcoming per per perfectionism is something that a lot of female leaders are challenged with. And so, um, again, from, from my research and from client work, um, I can tell you right now, I'm not a perfectionist. You know, I'm okay with B work. Yeah, I'm not a C student. I'm certainly an A, but let me tell you, I am not interested in perfectionism. But a lot of us are. And Brene Brown, we all know the sociologist Brene Brown, who's written many self-help and empowerment books and then just wrote a leadership book, um, says perfectionism is not the same thing as striving to be your best. That was interesting to hear. Perfection is not about healthy achievement and growth and that some people use this as a shield to protect against the pain of blame, judgment, or shame. So if you are challenged with the idea of perfectionism, I want for us to kind of look at some of these strategies to help you overcome this. And one is to kind of just switch that mindset. I'm not asking to do an overhaul, but I want you to switch that mindset to good is good enough. And I know that's hard for the perfectionist to take on. And you've got to let it be okay, right? You've got to let it just sit and be okay with that. And so I want for you to also trade those expectations for appreciation. And I know the perfectionist has very high standards. They're either cultural expectations, societal expectations, personal expectations, but they are major and there's, they're filled with a lot of pressure on this individual. And so I want for you to trade those expectations for a little bit of appreciation in that one moment. Appreciation for your skills, your knowledge, your intellect, your abilities. Just, just revel in that moment and let that pressure subside for the, for, for the time being. So these are things, again, that a lot of my female leaders um, really you know, have, a, have a problem moving forward or, a, or completing projects because they fear fail, failure or they feel you know, the, it's the fear of being judged. And so those are just some strategies to take on. Again, it's the mindset shift. Um, and it's the tiny tweaks that we need to make so that we can um, uh, get past the perfectionist in all of us. Um, I also want to cover uh, one last one here. And I'm, again, I'm sorry, I'm moving very quickly on these, everyone. Here is um, challenge number five, career redirections. So what does this mean? So a lot of um, our female leaders um, are re-entering the workforce. A lot of these leaders are... Um, Maybe, you know, we're done with raising children and they're ready to re-enter the workforce. Or how about those that are retiring um, and are looking for their second, third, or fourth act in life, right? Because life is a stage and we go through these different acts in our lifetime. And so something that um, I, I recommended a client do, she had 30 years in the manufacturing industry as a female uh, executive. And so that was a big accomplishment. Then she retired. Um, and she uh, was looking at what to do next. And so instead of having her, you know, um, tell me what her passions and interests were, I was telling her that she should look into consulting because all of that valuable wisdom that she has um, um, should be shared and she should get paid for this valuable information, this wisdom that she, that she, she garnered the last 30 years. And she said, no, I'm not interested in manufacturing anymore. I've retired, I've retired very well. Um, I wanna do something that, that lights me up. I wanna now actually live my passion. So I said, well, okay, well, well, what are you thinking? She said, I wanna, I wanna go into dog sitting and dog training and dog boarding. I said, I, she said, I, you know, this is something that I'm very passionate about. And, and I, I want to spend my time helping dog owners train their pups and help them with child well, child care, help them with, with, with doggy daycare or doggy care or, or even boarding. And I said, wow, did not expect for her to say that. 
especially uh, from someone who um, had a, an amazing career in manufacturing. And so we talked about those challenges. I said, well, t why don't you tell me then um, what, what skills, what, what knowledge, what information will you need to be successful in this new industry? And she said, well, you know, I got to learn the laws. I need to, you know, learn what laws protect me as a business owner. And especially in this, you know, in this field, um, I need to get certifications in dog training. You know, I need to get all these licenses. And I said, okay, so that is all something you can figure out. That is, th these are things that you can do. Thank goodness for the internet. And sometimes not, but the resources are out there. And so I, I wanted to touch then on the mindset she needed to get her to that next act, to get her to this next level of success. I said, let's talk about your why, because that's important to understand. Why is this important for you? Why does this light you up? And what are you going to provide? So your why and your what, let's, let's discuss these things. Because when you tie emotion with your intention, that's going to propel you when things get really, really challenging. And so I told her the skill set, don't worry, you'll figure that out and I'll help you along the way. But we got to touch on the mindset and what you need to get, um, to get ready for a successful business. So, so that's the fifth challenge, you know, career re redirections, um, you know, women re-entering the workforce after spending a great deal of time raising children and they are ready to re-emerge. And a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of the fears that come with that is, am I good enough? Do I still have the skills? Am I still current? Am I still viable? Can I still contribute? And you know, do I have the, the goods to do that? So it all comes from mindset. And then also for our friends who are retiring, right? They're going into their next act in life and they want, uh, they want to get prepared with the mindset. So these are the five challenges that, um, and I'm sorry, they're a little skewed here because I'm trying not to cover my face, but whatever. It is what it is. So we've got the five challenges that we talked about. Remember, this list is not it's, it's not an exhaustive list. Um, these are just five that I wanted to quickly talk to you about today. So many more, obviously. And if these don't resonate with you, that's okay. Um, take down some notes. Uh, these may affect you know a, a, a peer of yours, um, or you may be faced with these challenges in the near future. So take this as a, a university class time, <laughs> as a lecture. Um, and so use these strategies that I shared with you. If you are watching the replay, please give us some love. We still want engagement and interactions here. Um, this is your community. This is your tribe of leaders. We meet here every Thursday at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time here in my Austin office virtually. And we are here talking about the five challenges that um, uh, female leaders face and the strategies to overcome them. So let me pop in really quickly, everyone, into um, our comments, and then I'm going to let you all go. Uh, and while my iPad is refreshing, um, next Thursday's session is on the habits of a conscientious leader. So you all know we talked about values last time, right? We did discuss um, our personal values and how they influence our um, um, leadership. So now we're going to talk about habits of a conscientious leader. So those are coming for you next uh, Thursday. So make sure you guys uh, join me next Thursday. Okay. So uh, Anne and Gabriela, Elizabeth is here. Keep going. You're doing great. Oh, thank you. You just gave me an aha moment. Thank you, Elizabeth. Oh, Elizabeth is an amazing attorney, by the way. Oh, Elizabeth is phenomenal and a great leader um, in her community and in a new uh, organization that she is starting with another fellow leader. I'm so excited for you both. Um, Anne says, I have a great boss. She came to me with the paper that we had to work on that would get me a reclassification and a very large raise. All right. After about six months, it finally got put through. I got $3 more an hour. My boss apologized. She, she couldn't get more for me. And can I just say, your chair, your leader is amazing. She, she fought for you and, um, and really appreciates you and your contributions to her department. And, and I see that too, my friend. I'm so, I'm so excited for you. Uh, yeah, and, and Anne says, that is one of my worst fears uh, yeah, from a, oh, oh, remnants from a past relationship. I'm afraid to try some new things. Yeah, because of the voice that keeps trying to pop up in my head. I'm afraid I'm not going to be good enough. You have to find a way and 
to um, just turn the volume down a little bit, right? Because um, this isn't something that, that, I mean, you take a magic pill and you're all better. No, these things pop up uh, at, at all levels of success, at all stages of life. I mean, I wish that we were, you know, we and, and plus we do so much work to evolve and continue our, our, um, our journeys. But let me tell you, stuff will pop up and then you'll think, I thought I worked on that. And I thought I dealt with that crap. So why is it coming up for me again? And so don't be hard on yourself. If that happens, this is, um, a work in, in, in progress, honestly. And, um, and so try to find ways to, 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 to lower that volume as best as you can. Okay, everyone, thank you so much for joining me today. Again, next Thursday will be on the Habits of a Conscientious Leader. Um, before I, I let you go, will you guys go get my free gift? It's a PDF. It's the uh, five leadership fundamentals every leader should know. Um, I will make sure that I post this in the feed here or, uh, or uh, somewhere um, under this video so that you guys can go grab it. Um, I want to thank you all so much for your time and again for allowing me to go over. I'm going to try not to do that next time. Thank you guys. I'm wishing you all a fantastic weekend. And if you are on spring break, have some fun. Get some sunshine, right, Anne? Right, Gabriela? Yes, and, and Elizabeth. You guys have a wonderful um, spring break and, and, and time off. All right, everyone. We will talk to you guys uh, next Thursday at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. We're still here. Even though it's spring break, we're still working. And I'll go in and answer all your comments in just a bit. Thanks again. Bye.